welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. I'm Antonio. Latin America's complex relationship with race, particularly concerning Afro-descendants, is deeply rooted in the colonial past. Spanish colonizers implemented policies to whiten the population through racial mixing, aiming to erase African heritage over generations. This legacy has resulted in widespread marginalization and systemic discrimination against Black people across the region. Colombia, one of the most unequal countries in Latin America, highlights these issues starkly. The recent election of Francia Marquez as the vice first Afro-Colombian vice president brings hope, but also underscores the ongoing challenges faced by Black Colombians. The Spanish colonization of Latin America was marked by a rigid caste system designed to maintain racial hierarchy. Enslaved Africans were brought to the continent to work in plantations and mines, laying the foundation for their descendants enduring marginalization. The colonizers encouraged racial mixing, mestizaje, to lighten the population a practice aimed at erasing blackness over generations. This racial ideology was entrenched in societal structures, leading to the establishment of a socioeconomic hierarchy where lighter-skinned individuals held more power and privilege. The impact of these colonial policies is evident in the persistent racial disparities seen today. The history of Black Afro-Colombians is a profound narrative of resilience, cultural richness, and ongoing struggle against systemic discrimination. This story begins in the 16th century, when enslaved Africans were brought to Colombia by Spanish colonizers to work on plantations and in mines. Despite the oppressive conditions, these Africans laid the foundation for for a vibrant communities and cultural expressions that have persisted through centuries. The arrival of enslaved Africans in Colombia marked the beginning of a long history of resistance. Cartagena de Indias, a major port city, became the primary entry point for African slaves. Over time, the enslaved population began to resist their conditions, leading to the establishment of palinkis, free black communities that were amount first in the Americas. These communities, such as San Basilio de Palenque, became centers of cultural preservation and resistance against colonial rule. The Palenques were not just refuge from slavery, they were vibrant hubs of African culture and political autonomy. The residents maintain their language, spiritual practices, and social structure, which allowed them to resist assimilation into colonial society. This legacy of resi re resistance is a cornerstone of Afro-Colombian identity and has inspired generations to fight for their rights and recognition. The abolition of slavery in 1851 did not immediately translate into equality for Afro-Colombians. Many were relegated to isolated rural areas, facing economic hardship and limited access to education and political power. Despite these challenges, Afro-Colombian culture flourished, particularly in music, dance, and religion. The Pacific Coast became a stronghold of 
Afro-Colombian identity, where communities preserve their ancestral languages and customs. Afro-Colombians have significantly influenced Colombia's cultural landscape. Musical genres such as cumbia and champeta have roots in African rhythm and have become integral to Colombian culture. These cultural expressions have been a means of resistance and a way to assert Afro-Colombian identity in a society that often marginalized them. In contemporary Colombia, Afro-Colombians continue to face significant socioeconomic challenges. They are disproportionately affected by poverty, unemployment, and violence, particularly in regions affected by the country's armed conflict. Many Afro-Colombians have been displaced from their homes due to violence and land dispositions, exacerbating their marginalization. Despite these adversities, Afro-Colombians have become increasingly organized and politically active. The creation of the Comisión Interseccional para el Avance de la Población Afro-Colombiana, Palenquera y Raizal, in, two, two, in 2007, marked a significant step towards addressing the educational and economic disparities faced by Afro-Colombians However, many of these initiatives have yet to result in substantial improvement. Don't worry, I am going to translate what that commission means. So, the translation is Intersectional Commission for the Advancement of the Afro-Colombian Palenquera and Raizal Population. Okay. <laughs> the, the election of Francia Marquez as Colombia's first Afro-Colombian vice president in 2022 represents a historic milestone. Marquez, a human rights and environmental activist, has been a vocal advocate for marginalized communities. Her leadership has brought international attention to the issues facing Afro-Colombians and has challenged the historical narrative that have excluded them from power. Marquez's journey from a small village in Cauca to the vice presidency is a testament to the resilience and determination of Afro-Colombians. Her platform focuses on addressing the needs of marginalized communities, including improving access to education, healthcare, and land rights. Marquez, election is a powerful message that change is possible and that Afro-Colombians are an integral part of Colombia's future. The history of Afro-Colombians is one of enduring strength in the face of adversity. From the formation of Palenques to the election of Francia Marquez, Afro-Colombians have continuously fought for their rights and recognition. While challenges remain, the progress made is inspiring and underscores the importance of acknowledging the complex history of race in Colombia. Understanding the history is crucial and appreciating the, 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 the present and working towards a more equitable future for all Colombians. As Colombia continues to grapple with issues of race and inequality, the contribution and struggles of Afro-Colombians 
must be at the forefront of the national conversation. By embracing this rich heritage, Colombia can move towards a more inclusive society that values and uplifts all its citizens. Invoking the protection of God, do you swear before this corporation that represents the people of Colombia to faithfully and loyally fulfill the duties that the position of Vice President of the Republic imposes on you in accordance with the Constitution and laws. I swear to God and the people to faithfully comply with the Constitution and the laws of Colombia. I also swear before my ancestors until dignity becomes customary. Hello, hope you're enjoying the episode on Colombia and race. If this is your first time um, checking out our podcast, welcome. Thank you for being here. Hope you've enjoyed the content thus far. Do subscribe if you like it. If you don't, try us a couple more times. And if you still don't like it, that's cool. Thank you. Um, but if you do, do subscribe. For subscribers, new ones and vintage, do make sure you have your notification, that bell is notification, make sure you have it on. Yes, I know, sometimes you don't get your notifications and that's because, listen, the platform ever so often, they decide they don't like Sussex friendly podcasters and they just take us through, what's it called, the, the ringers, the hanger, whatever it's called. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, I'm still going through it. Like almost every episode I have to like redo and upload like two or three times. It's a pain. But I'm not here to, to, <laughs> to tell you folks what's happening right, right, right now. And uh, thumbs up and leave a comment. So if you have any questions, what do you think thus, um, thus far? Is it what you thought it would be like in regards to Afro um, Afro Colombians? Is, is there anything that has surprised you, or do you have any questions? Use the comment section. All right. So clicky, 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 clicky. So click this, click that, click that, click everything, and just click and see, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Okay, so thank you for sticking around. I wanted to get to some of the comments that you had left. But before getting to the comments, I just wanted to say that, you know, this this government that is in presently, um, left this gov government, is having a, a really um, tough time. Uh, it's 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 the first time Colombia has a leftist government. This is a government that has promised a lot of things to um, to displaced people, to minorities, to Afro Colombians, um, to 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 the people of people people of the land, right? And Colombia has been ruled for such a long time of the sort of political elite 
um, between the conservatives and the sort of moderate conservatives. And <clears throat> they've tried everything along the way. Um, the vice president has, throughout the campaign, you know, some, some awful racist derogatory things were said about, about her. Um, and now as SVP, they're still saying some awful things still. Actually, one woman was, was actually um, sentenced and, and, and is in jail presently um, because she called the vice president a certain word um, and it's related to an animal. And um, so it's, 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 it's been tough. And I'll tell you right now, they were in investigations. I think there's, there's about three things right now. Um, the interior ministry, um, sorry, the interior minister test, um, test, uh, test testimony. Uh, the Supreme Court ordered the interior minister Luis Fernando Velasco to testify in a corruption probe related to suspicious um, purchases of water tanks. Then you had two um, ma magistrates from the National Electoral Council called for an investigation into the financing of um, President Petro's campaign in 2022. And then former officials have made accusations of bribery involving high rank members of Congress, which the Supreme Court will be investigating. So at every single step, there's all this like, so that's happened, and it's these these things that the elites keep keep still throwing at them. And uh, I don't know if you know this yet, but the Ministry of um, of Equality and um, Equity is on hold because some concerned citizens um, took it to the to the Electoral Court, so they took. They took it to the Colombian Constitutional Court, um, made a, a crucial decision based on the complaint um, to annul the creation of the Ministry of Equity and um, Equality. This ministry was going to be led, or led initially by Vice President uh, Francia Marquez, was charged with, the, with, fi with fighting poverty in the country. The court... Reasoning for this decision was that the law approving the ministry's creation lacked a proper anal analysis of its fiscal impact. So in other words, the, the people who complained that this ministry shouldn't exist um, basically brought up three counts right. within the constitutional so I want to get to some of your comments um, that you've left, rules um, and created a new ministry. And answer those and by answering to, them, I think... To the court We'll Two of those rules, the court said, more, uh, no, this is not, like, they, they did follow Columbia. these two things, but now, this one thing, where they need to actually, in the application, prove that what, they push, what they're doing that, um, for the poor and, Madame, and, and for marginalized communities is actually fis fiscally responsible and it's going to have a positive uh, impact for the country. Office. So they have to prove and, it. So tell me you know, something. When she said, How are you going to prove that giving children also knapsacks on my with ancestors. books and everything they need for the school and year and, I'm not going and, to and translate proper shoes word by word is going to be beneficial the for the nation? Means, I mean, we right? all know it's going to be Until, beneficial for the nation. How do you prove it now? To my they want proof now. So is this Until circle, you can't give them proof have now. Dignity. And it's frustrating. Until we have dignity. Um, uh, Vice oh, President Francia Marquez I, I, a lot. I can feel it right now in my right? throat. Um, because there's so much she wants to do. This, but and they have a mandate to it, do it. Was it was absolutely But the opposition and the, these elites have put in I, obstacles. I, I, I wasn't expecting. Okay. And let's, you can hear the crowd get to your comments. wild when she said that. All right, our first comment is from Connie. Connie Bummer. Um, hello, Antonio. Thank you for detailed information about Colombia. It's a beautiful country with lots of beautiful people. Their food is delicious. Afro-Colombian food is must, most, m m must to taste. Be safe, Antonio. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen. The food, mm -hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> I love, 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 love the food. Also, like, I, I love, there's certain foods I think that is very comforting. And I think for those of us that love comfort food, come is the place. <laughs> I love me a fried fish. I love, um, like all, all this, they have all, all these different types of like soups, like sancocho, and, and, and I, don't, I, don't, I listen, I, I have to stop because <laughs> I'm getting hungry. And I think Connie, you did say in another post, you said, um, seeing all the pictures, images of the food are making you hungry. I'm getting hungry now too. Uh, it, it's just great. The people are absolutely fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous. And, and I'm talking again from my experience of being there, right? I've been there a few a few times, and each time it's it's been wonderful. All right, our next one, um, Hugh. Hi, Hugh. How are you? Um, uh, such a rich cultural um, diversity. Check out San Andres. Um, Harry and Megan will have a blast. Hugh, are you talking about the San Andres in, it's an island, and it's in the archipelago. I think it's even like, <laughs> it's even closer to Nicaragua than it is to Colombia. Uh, you, have to you actually have to take a plane to get there. If it's the same island I'm, that we're thinking about. Um, it is beautiful. I haven't been, but the beaches and all that looks amazing. I, uh, it, it's, you know, what, what, what can I say? The, the culture is great. Um, the people are great. As long as you don't, don't do, <laughs> don't be silly and go do nonsense. Yeah. Um, I think Harry and Megan are going to have a wonderful time. And, uh, I mean, the government is taking care of them while they're actually there. Right. So, and they're going to show them the best and they're going to have, um, a certain viewpoint. Okay, thank you, Hugh. Okay, who's next? Let's see. Um, Reba, 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 Reba. Okay, uh, Reba uh, says, hello, Antonio, and thank you for opening Colombia to us. I have been to Costa Rica and have been interested in Colombia. It's so beautiful and full of my people. Yeah. Um, are there any Olmec heads there? Can't wait. Handsome. Who are you calling handsome me? Because if you are, thank you. <laughs> if you're talking about the people in Colombia, that too, they are. Um, I'll say for sure, there aren't any Olmec heads. Um, I think you can find those still in a certain area in Mexico, I think. I might be wrong, but I don't, uh, yeah, I don't recall that there was any in um, Colombia. But if you do plan to go, if you want to go, send me a message <laughs> and I will tell you more. I will say that I was hesitant to go. I've always wanted to go, but you know, with with the reputation that Colombia has had to carry for so many years because there's such internal conflicts and the guerrilla and all of that, it wasn't a very safe place. And and people that I knew that had gone, it said, you know, don't go without knowing people. Like like go and you know know someone who lives there and then go. But a few years back, I. You know, I'd gone to Europe a bunch of times and so on, and I just craved, I, I just missed Latin America. I, 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 I craved that environment, um, the people, the food, the just the atmosphere, the air. And I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to go. And I, of course, I read up on things. I made sure where I was staying. I, I, I knew what I wanted to do. And, um, it just it was just so great i had such a great time and i came back and i told my parents and then they were like okay so when are we going <laughs> so you know 
went went with them again and um they also had a wonderful time and then we find out that my uncle my mom's brother um he's retiring sometime soon and he's building a house in cartagena and uh we were like what that's great <laughs> mind you i wouldn't stay at his place because where he's building his house is not an area i would want to hang out in i mean if i'm going to cartagena i'm going to be close to the beach and <laughs> hang out at the beach every day but um yeah it's 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 really great it's wonderful you know what's funny i haven't gone to costa rica everyone in my family is gone i haven't gone yet and um so i i i do want to go to Cos Cos um, costa rica eventually but i don't want to do costa rica as a solo trip i want to do it like maybe with family or with um friends let's see what happens but i recommend colombia again with the warning that don't be silly don't be stupid not like i think any of you would be but if you do plan um or really interested fire me off an email and uh, uh we will chat right all right who's next hello mary 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 says um the crime rate in the uk is very high uk is a very unstable place socially economically physically and most of all mentally the kingdom united is in its um derangement and illusion breeds the perfect environment for their lazy welfare royals and their i shouldn't laugh i'm sorry and their toxic media agents to flourish at the expense of their ador adoring but suffering plebs i need to put my glasses on and i don't have it um uh, colombia appears such a lovely place rich in history culture and wonderful people the country was never on my list of places to visit but now seeing your presentation i am definitely very intrigued and interested well mary man let me tell you as i said um for to i uh, um to um um reba if you are truly interested look send me an, an email and we will chat maybe we can do it I, I can do it together everyone who's interested in actually i'm visiting colombia maybe i'll come and join everybody <laughs> i don't know maybe i'll maybe I'll organize a tour let's all do it <coughs> excuse me um i couldn't agree okay okay i don't want to be <laughs> this type of person today but listen you you said what you said and based on everything that happened last week in in the uk you you're you're proven right and i will say that it look i wasn't there so i feel weird saying you know it the images traumatized me but it's not like deep trauma but it's trauma of seeing that kind of hate seeing that kind of hate does something to me um because i also see the pain i see the pain of ignorance i see the pain of someone who's suffering who who doesn't quite understand how they fit and where they fit in the world that thinks that their identity is being stolen or taken away from them and they're looking to, to to someone to blame and point the fingers to and it's just very very sad because we have we have we have no peacemakers anymore um in the world if we have them they're either hiding or they're trying to decide what to do we don't have leaders that have the interest of the people we have leaders who have the interest of their pockets and what they their next plan is going to be or step is going to be once they leave government 
Because I cannot fathom a nation where you have the press, the tabloid press and media in general that is in coercion, collusion, whatever you want to say it allegedly, with these billionaires to keep the population just a certain way. And what saddens me also is that how much of it I was ignorant to, right? I, and I've been going to the UK since I was a kid. And I mean, also like I didn't stay in London a lot. Um, and where I stayed, I never really experienced certain things. Like one of my best friends, um, when I would say to him certain things, he'd be like, well, lucky you. I'm like, what do you mean lucky me? And, and his experience was very different. And, you know, anyways, I hear you. So I'll say if you're interested, again, in Colombia, it's it, it, wonderful history, beautiful, wonderful people. Um, there's stuff to do. The beaches in Cartagena, um, I love it. Okay, we've got two from Jens and from Suzy Q. Oh, that's so okay. So Jens says, um, thank you so much for sharing your travel experience, knowledge, and wisdom with us. You're always a bright spot. Oh, oh you're going to make me get emotional. <laughs> I swear I'm just the most silly person. I I I the two the two extremes of emotions, right? Like I giggle off a of silly stupid stuff or I start laughing or someone says something nice to me or whatever and I just get emotional very quickly or if I see something really sad. Um I just get emotional because I anyways, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm that is such a wonderful compliment. Um thank you. Suzy Q. Thanks, Antonio, for this wonderful podcast. You are very knowledgeable and insightful. I try to be. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. I keep keep bringing the com the the compliments. I love them. I love them. <laughs> feed my ego. Feed my ego. No, I'm just joking. I I I keep my ego in check and um, I don't have much of an ego. I think everyone needs to have a healthy ego because we do need to like, people say, oh, I don't have any ego. I'm like, you're lying. We all have it. We all have, it's just that we need to have a healthy ego because if you don't have a little bit of ego, then that means like you don't, you know what I mean? You need to have confidence in yourself in certain things and, and, and you know, it, 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 it will carry you it will carry you forward. And the things that I know, I know. And I love to share the things that, that I know. And the things that I don't, I've researched that crap. On <laughs> I do. I do. I honestly do. I'll be like, la, 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 la. like <laughs> one of my friends called me the other day and I was doing some research um, for the podcast. And she goes to me, she goes, are you still doing more research? I said, yeah, yeah. And she goes, oh, my gosh. She was like, dude, stop. She goes, I was like, no, I want to know. And when I speak about something, I want to make sure I'm speaking about it because I've checked the stuff and I know it. Anyways, thank you. Thank you so much. Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Um, Jackie says, nice educational video. Um uh, Colombia is a beautiful country and President Gustavo and VP Francia are strong, wonderful leaders who are from a good working class family. They won't allow any racist pigs harass the Sussex. They have a 62 year old racist lady. Yes, 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 they do in jail for um, talking racist crap. I don't recommend those dirty British media to mess with Gustavo. He recently made a statement. He was pissed. They insulted his country. So he will kick their racist earth. Um, uh, white uh, privilege don't exist in Colombia, like in US or UK. Colombian prisons are brutal. They will. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Una paliza. Eso es lo que van a recibir, una paliza. Ay, 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 Jackie, thank you for that. That is just great. That's great. I listen, I agree. I absolutely agree. And, you know, it goes to show, though, it really goes to show that anytime anyone from the UK say we're not racist, just, 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 just say, I'm happy that that's what you believe and move on. Don't argue with them. Don't, because if by now, You don't know that your country is racist. I, you know what, what sickens me, what sickens me is how brutal, how daring, how lack of shame these people are. That they have telegraphed it all. They, they, they write it. They have TV shows. They have their um, YouTube shows. And if you can't, well, what am I saying if you can't? I mean, look at the people that were rioting. Look at the people that were rioting, right? So I, I, I don't think I, I can say if, if, you, if you can't analyze and, and, and put one and one together and realize what is happening. Because if you're going to keep blaming, I was, because I listened to James O'Brien as much excuse me, as much as I can. And sometimes when he's talking to these people and they're so certain in their opinion, and he'll ask them the most simplistic question. So how do you know that? Where did you get that information from? When you go to the hospital, Who, who, who's, who's, who's the, because it's this, this whole idea, get the immigrants out, right? The people who are keeping the country and countries afloat usually are immigrants. That's why you have immigration. Because any country that's being managed properly You would want your people to, in each generation, move up the ladder. And I mean in any country that where all things are equal. And we know that doesn't exist anywhere, basically. Right? So instead of blaming, and this is what frustrates me. So when you look at your circumstances... You're blaming the person that just arrived and it's in a dinghy or something. So you're blaming them for 15 plus years of austerity. You're blaming them because you can't find a proper job. Who closed down the mines in your city or in your town? Who, who decided to close down centers for, 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 for um, young people? Who did that? Who decided to um, underfund the NHS or, or, or <sighs> make sure most of the money was going to private in, in, instead of to the NHS? Who took all those, all that millions upon millions of pounds to get and give, give like, be, like the contracts to, to, to their buddies and their friends when COVID was happening? The government. The Tories. But do I, I don't get it. Like I'm getting frustrated. I don't get it. The more I think about it, I'm going, how stupid are you? And I have friends in the UK. <laughs> you know, I, I, when things are happening, like I, 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 I call them and I was like, and, you know, are, are, are you guys okay? Are you folks all right? You know, I, I, I knew they were going to be okay, but, but still, I wanted to, like, to like hear, hear their, their voices and hear that like, they, were, they, were, they, were they were all right and stuff wasn't happening where, where, where they, they are. Boy. Okay, let's see. Next one. Next one. Um, Gwendolyn. Hello, Gwendolyn. All right. Uh, a blessed Sunday. Thank you. Um, to you, Antonio. 
The visit of H&M to Colombia has sent the royal family and toxic British media into <laughs> respiratory attack. Yes, it has. Some of them may already be on <laughs> Oh, no, I love support. I love it. They are now trying to gaslight us into thinking Colombia is the unsafest place in the world. Was not Nigeria though? Ay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't point any of that out with when Sophie, the Duchess of. <laughs> I have issues saying <laughs> Duchess. Uh, Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh. And Charles went there. Yeah, I think he was there not, not too long ago. Um, they're not talking about the racist riots and murders of children in the UK. The media attacking countries, H&M visit, is making enemies for the UK, causing more harm than good. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Exactly what I was trying to say, Gwendolyn. You're absolutely correct. Like, I don't understand why the foreign ministry the home office or whomever doesn't pick up the phone and say listen cut it off like like enough because this is ruining our reputation abroad because they're not that they they're they're attacking government officials of that country you're going to disrespect the president of colombia you're going to disrespect the vice president like, what, what is wrong with you? I'm going to wrap it up. I wanted to say, um, as I said prior, that I think this is a very strategic thing for um, the VP of Colombia to do, the government of Colombia to do. Knowing and having the information now about the sort of um, uh, pushback that they're receiving in order to get some of these programs that they want implemented. As the, as the vice president said, you know, Colombia is one of the most, if not the most unequal society that exists. And in one of the speeches she gives, she goes, it's an embarrassment. And she goes, we can't have, you know, more women suffering because at the hands of their husbands or boyfriends, we can't have this discrimination and racism that continues to um, not give and provide opportunities for, you know, black Colombians, indigenous Colombians. We can't continue to say, well, the court wants these laws when we try to put these things in and the court goes oh no you meant this has to go back there this and then it's a circle and she goes we're not going anywhere she goes this country is changing and 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 the way it's changing it's for the good but right now only the top people the elites are enjoying the change and enjoying the fruits of you know, this, 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 this wave of economic progress that Colombia is experiencing. So I think, and this is just my opinion, with the brand, the no notoriety of Harry and Meghan and Archwell, it's a very strategic and intelligent way to bring attention to causes of a country, right? So if you want to highlight that, let's say, for example, if you want to highlight that um, there is a new cancer treatment at top of the line of everything hospital in Abu Dhabi, right? Then you would call up Kate and say, hey, Kate, Come over to Abu Dhabi, you know, we'll throw the red carpet out and we'll take you on a tour through our facility and, you know, you can stay here and we will treat your cancer. You know, the publicity, the media coverage, all of that will receive around the world that 
center or hospital couldn't couldn't pay for. So I think it's strategic for them to have them there so they can show and say, here are some programs we've implemented. Here are some things we're actually doing, but we want to do more. And that more means, hey, could we partner with you? Or do you see an opportunity where maybe we can partner in regards to mental health? That way, there is this prestigious, I mean, on the prince, the duchess and the duke, and their foundation attached to it. So it's a very, very intelligent way to do it. And it shows the importance, the power that Harry and Meghan have. The, 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 the intelligence of the way they have, they have created the foundation and the vision for it. Just genius. Genius, absolutely, services universal. Genius, they've done. It.